Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to show you how to fix a vehicle that's running lean. Now if your vehicle hesitates, has a lack of acceleration, a lot of times that's because it's running lean. In this case, it's easy to figure the original diagnosis because you just hook up a scan tool. A simple thing here, just get the business in. And there's a data port, we just plug it in and watch the machine do its thing. It knows what it is. It read it, and here we go. Now it's going to scan it. There's all the codes. In this case, it's PO174, bank 2 running too lean, and PO171, bank 1 system too lean. And here, when we look at the data, we see that the long-term fuel trim of number 1 is 23.4, 22.7 for bank 2. Now, what does that mean in the real world? Well, the computer is adding 20-something percent fuel to both bank 1 and bank two thinks the engine is running too lean doesn't have enough fuel and it's adding fuel to each bank now this is a gm vortec v8 engine so both sides of the engine are adding 20 something percent fuel so whatever's wrong with this vehicle it's affecting the whole engine let's say you had one side was lean and one side wasn't that would mean the problem was on that one side like there was an intake leak on the intake manifold gasket clogged injectors on one side and not the other but this is both sides they're almost exactly the same so it's something that affects the entire engine now a massive vacuum leak could do that so let's start it up and listen to see if we can have any air sucking that we can say okay that's obvious it's sucking air and while I look around, I don't hear any massive leaks. You hear a little clicking here and there from the lifters. I mean, it's got 180,000 miles on it, so there's somewhere. But there's no massive leaks, and it really isn't idling all that bad. So since it's running lean, too much air will make it run lean, or not enough fuel. Well, we don't hear any air leaks, but let's check the air filter just in case something's really messed up there. So we're on screw the air filter housing. Now take some more screws off, they hide them everywhere. Finally, out it comes. Change the air filter because the material's kind of dried out, but as you can see, when you put it up to the sun, you can see through it pretty well, so this isn't the main problem. But I am going to change it because look at this. See the amount of pleats on this one? Here's the quality one I'm replacing to. It has many more pleats. This. I'll count them. This one has 58 pleats. Better quality one I bought has over 80 pleats on it. So this is going to filter better anyways. That's why I tell you, buy a quality filter. Don't buy the cheapest one you can get your hands on. The cheaper ones, hey, they don't have as much filtering material. This has a lot more filtering material. Use a quality filter. Now on this General Motors vehicle, right after the air filter is the mass airflow sensor. Here's a new one. The air flows through it. Got that cover off anyways. And these little metering devices measure how many grams of air come into the engine so the engine knows how much fuel to pump into the engine with the fuel injectors this is very critical for the running of the engine now these things go bad all the time and when you got a vehicle that's got 180,000 miles on it this one still has the original one odds are it's just flat worn out inside and when these wear out as the air flows through it doesn't measure the air correctly so if it thinks less air is coming in than's actually coming in it will spray less fuel into the engine then the engine will indeed run lean and that's where the oxygen sensor system on the exhaust comes into effect well, those oxygen sensors they actually measure whether the engine's running rich or lean if this mass airflow sensor is giving the wrong data to the computer and the computer doesn't put in enough fuel the engine will run lean but the oxygen sensors will read that and now tell it it's running too lean and then the computer will command extra fuel now the extra fuel can make the engine run perfectly fine in the case of this it doesn't run that bad for a car that's got 180,000 miles on it let's say the fuel pump was going out on this thing and if you have a weak fuel pump doesn't pump enough fuel it can also make it run lean but here that can't be the case if your fuel pumps weak guess what your vehicle can't go at higher speeds especially a heavy thing like this at higher speeds it'll lose acceleration it might only go 60 65 and not any further this thing goes fast on a highway has no problems with that so since both sides are running lean there's no real vacuum leak showing but it goes plenty fast enough on a highway I'm taking a very educated guess that this mass airflow sensor has gone bad, so I'm going to install this brand new one. So we get a screwdriver and loosen the tab. 
the power pops off. Then we go to the clamps and unscrew the clamps and hold it in place. And then pop it off. It's been on there a long time. It might be kind of stuck. But it will come off. Sometimes you need a screwdriver so you can get the rubber off because it's been on there so long. Loosen the clamps a little bit more. Huh. Then the other end comes off. Now you put it back the same way you took it off, but if you get confused, they're smart enough that this has a little flow. The flow is pointed that way. That means the air comes in here and flows. So in this case, they're built exactly the same. This one came out like this, and this one goes in so that the air flows in. And you reuse this rubber neck part. They're cheap when I make these things. Snap that on. Then this end fits back in here. You make sure it's nice and snug. Then we'll pick the whole thing up and carefully slide it in. You want it to seal just right. But don't be like me and forget the air filter. <laughs> we'll stick that in first. Then put it back together. Then tighten up the clamps. And of course, don't forget to plug it back in. There we go. To tighten the air filter housing on all four screws. And start her up and see how it runs. Now we're going to let it warm up for a while, take it for a road test. Then we'll look at the fuel trim levels and see what's happened. See if it's still running lean or not. Because nothing beats a good 15, 20 minute road test in the city and at highway speeds. It can run lean idling or driving in the city or driving on the highway. So you got to test it on all three. Well, it's sure running fine now on the highway. We'll take it back and check the data. And as we can see now, there's no codes, they're all gone. And the long-term fuel trim is starting to go down. It's 15 and 17 instead of 20. And that's the thing about long-term fuel. It's a long-term thing, so it will gradually go down as you drive. Now we'll look at the short-term data to see what happens short-term. The short-term is almost perfect. This one's zero, then minus two, zero, zero, minus two. So it's very close to perfect. So they had fixed it. So now you know what to do when your car's engine is running lean and isn't running correctly. Sometimes it's as simple as replacing one of these math sensors. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Say full Mazumba is a 2017 Toyota Corolla. A good car. Please advise on changing the CVT fluid every 25,000 miles. It's a good idea for the longevity of the transmission. Things are better made than they used to be. The fluid is better made. The metallurgy is better in the transmissions. Now that's overkill. You wouldn't need to do it every 25,000 miles. But if it was mine, I'd change it every 50,000 miles. In the modern transmissions, all you do on those CVT things is you drain out what comes out. And on that particular one, the last time I did one, it was less than three quarts of fluid, which is less than one third of all the fluid in the system. So you're only changing one third of it at a time, but it's very good fluid. So if you use the Toyota fluid, change it every 50,000 miles yourself, learn how to do it, how to drain it out, and then how to pump the same amount of fluid back in, measure what came out, put that same amount, and that is the best thing to do. You don't need to do every 25,000 miles. Me, I do it every 50. I I do enough of those. I can do one of those in about 15 minutes, so it's not that big of a deal, and you can easily learn how to do it yourself. Kai Ortiz says, Scotty, I got my first car. It's a Hoopty. 1994 Nissan Sentra. I hope she's worth fixing up. Back in 1994, Nissan was still Nissan. They ran their own company. They were making better cars in those days. I had customers in those days get two, 300,000 miles pretty much trouble-free out of those things. Now, of course, it's a 94. So you're talking about what? A 26 year old car. It's an old car. So you need to check all the rubber, see if the brake calipers leak, the hoses, the radiator hoses, check all the fluids regularly, top them up as you need to be, and stuff like, hey, the radiator might go bad. They're made out of plastic and aluminum, plastic will crack. Then put another radiator in it. They're not that expensive. I can get radiators for that thing for like $79. They don't cost much aftermarket, so take care of it. You never know. It might last quite some time. Brandon Aguero says, any opinions on a Nissan Murano? My wife has handed one down to her. Okay, well I'm assuming she got it for free. Do not look a gift horse in the mouth. If it runs okay and it goes good and she got it for nothing, change the oil every three to five thousand miles. Flush the coolant out every five years or so. Change the transmission fluid every fifty, sixty thousand miles. Baby it. Now they're not the greatest of cars. As time goes on they often have problems, especially with their automatic transmissions. And a lot of them will have problems with their electronic fuel injection as they age, some of the wiring shorts out and stuff on them. But I mean if you got it for free, 
baby and take care of it. You never know. Just realize you got it for nothing. So let's say automatic transmission goes out of it. Somebody's telling you it's going to be 35, 4,500 bucks. You just junk it then. Don't even bother fixing it. But you never know. You got it for nothing. Baby, you take care of it. You never know. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.